Hi there, it's Tanya. I'm from my page Botanicamy, an alchemy of soothing botanic, uh, botanic ingredients and of course all about education of how to incorporate uh, daily things into a healthy lifestyle that's going to be able to support you through um, stressful times or situations where you have anxious feelings or even where your body is um, feeling a little bit ungrounded or unbalanced and you need to support it to get back where you need it to be. So welcome. Today is going to be all about wood oils, wood essential oils. Um, some of them obviously include tree oils and I think today's is really appropriate because I do feel if we talk about the woo-woo side combining that with the science side there's quite a lot of um, energies at the moment with what is going on around you, around us. Um, hi, Yulandi. Oh, I can see more people logging. Hi, Clovis. Shannon. Hi, guys. Thank you for joining. I feel that there's quite a lot of energies floating around and these are fluctuating up and down and people who do not know why they're feeling up and down um, might get some enlightenment today because there is really... Um, a lot of energy going around, uh, whether it's the, the stressful inputs that you're getting in from your friends and family and the news on the outside, whether it's literally just you being in, so in tune with your body and feeling what is going on, there definitely is a lot of fluctuations um, of energies. And I think we can get carried away by them and we can get tied up in that tide and get swept out to sea if we don't start using some supportive mechanisms to ground us and to balance us um, and just pull ourselves towards each other. So today we're going to be talking about those. Brilliant, there's more people. Hi, I'm just gonna keep, give a couple of seconds more for people to log in. Quibus, hi Quibus, Michelle, Skinny2 is in. Uh, Charmaine is also in, welcome you guys. Today's class, I'm going to be talking about wood essential oils as well as additional techniques that you can start or maybe just do more of in this time frame where you do need, feel the need to rebalance yourself. Oh, Deline's also coming in, thanks guys. Send up some hearts, likes also. If you wanna go and please um, put in a comment, tell us where you're from. And then with that, in that same comment, please. Uh, Margareta's also coming in, I can see some hearts, brilliant, thank you. Um, love the love. <laughs> Just go put in the comments, please, where you're from. And then also, what your favorite wood essential oil is. We all have our favorites, um, but it's nice for me to, to know what other people's favorites are. Um, perhaps we can delve into them a little bit deeper in future talks as well, in future classes. So if uh, it's, you know, sharing is caring, go and pop your where you're from in the comments, and then also what your favorite wood essential oil is. So if you don't know what a wood essential oil is, uh, Shannon's from Joburg, favorite oil please. <laughs> That's part of the game. So wood essential oils are those essential oils um, that either come from the wood, obvious, uh, the leaves, sometimes the branches, or the resin of a tree, okay? And if you think about how a tree stands, it's really tall, some of them, but they're really grounded. Um, their root system is really fixed. Oh, Dalim coming in as well, hello, hello. Uh, roots are really fixed. And the root system is there to give this tree stability. And Vanessa, hi, welcome. Thank you for joining. So tree, the, the oil is coming from the tree, from the various different parts of this tree. Because they're doing um, all the, where it, you know, where it comes from the tree, the whole tree is fixed. Yes, the wind can sometimes blow. Yes, there can be very hectic storms and it's gotta be a really hectic, hectic storm before that tree actually like topples over. Most of them actually stay really grounded um, because that is what they, their function is. They stay grounded and they don't get too frazzled about what's going on around them. So if you're someone that is going to um, be frazzled at the moment with what's going on with all the inputs, you feel your systems in your body is a little bit out of balance. Oh my goodness, Anna, all the way from UK. Fantastic. Thank you for joining. <laughs> so that's why tree essential oils, either the wood, the leaves, the branch, or the resin, that is why they offer so much support to our bodies, specifically by helping us to ground and to rebalance physically, but also emotionally. Oh, we also have Jerry coming. Hello, hello. And Alison, all the way from Cape Town, Paul, fantastic. Mm, Deline's saying too many worlds to choose from. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, but today I'll speak more on two of my favorites of the favorites, um, and then I'll also mention the other ones as well, okay? 
So please remember if you've just joined in, go pop in the comments where you're from and also what your favorite wood essential oil is because I might just expand on those in future classes. Okay, so uh, Dalina saying frankincense and Douglas fir. Mm, I can associate with maybe the Frank. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the Douglas fir for some reason. Uh, Yulandi is saying Copa, Hiva and Frank. Oh, you're in luck today because those are my favorite wood oils. So you're going to get a little bit more info about those today. So I think let's carry on with the class. I can see quite a few people have logged in. So we are ready to go. All right. So I've now already mentioned which parts of the tree um, these oils come from and why we then consider them to be um, wood oils. Okay. And the reason um, they are so grounding and balancing is obviously because of the structure of the tree. We've always got to think of what's happening, where we're isolating the essential oils from. Um, but besides that, it very heavily uh, depends on the chemical constituents that you then obviously find in these essential oils. And a lot of the tree oils are very high in alkenes, um, as well as sesquiterpene alcohols, um, as well as pinenes. Okay, so the alpha pinene, think for instance, frankincense has actually got a very high concentration of alpha pinene in it. Oh, we even have Chucky joining in. Fantastic, thank you. Chucky, please go put in the comments what your favorite wood oil is. Oh, Charmaine is you're in luck. <laughs> also, Frank and Copa Eva. Brilliant. So, um, alpha pinene, frankincense has got that in a really high concentration. Uh, sesquiterpene alcohols, there we're thinking things like sandalwood. Um, the, the constituent itself is called santanol. And then the monoterpene alkenes, again, high in the frank. So, frank being the king of all oils has got quite a lot of these very balancing, very soothing, um, very able to take care of and support when you've got anxious feelings and you feel very unbalanced and all over the place. Okay, so. The, the monoterpene alkenes are quite high in frankincense and then also in copaheba because copaheba has got the sesquiterpene alkenes in there. So those are the chemical constituents we are looking for in an oil when we need that very much um, balancing, grounding and calming effect. Okay, so um, the before we, we carry on with skills that you can incorporate with the support of these essential oils, I'm actually going to mention at the end, I would like to go through some of these oils individually um, and tell them or tell you which ones of them obviously have the balancing and the grinding and effect and then also just mention why. But besides that, they also do have very unique properties to a lot of them as well, offering you different support. Okay, so whether it's being a body system, or emotional but because they have so many different constituents essential oils work holistically to support your body so you're not just going to get one thing out of them they're going to be for instance be able to balance and calm your emotions but they also might be able to balance a system or an organ or some kind of process that is happening in your body that has gone off kilter or off balance all right so let's talk firstly about copa eva um, this is an oil i've been using for quite a while, but I must say the last week I have been increasing the usage of it daily. And the reason why is I have started to feel quite a, a lot of bouncing energies at the moment. Some people are happy, some people are sad, um, and energies are just really uh, mumbling about, and people are going through these waves of ups and downs and ups and downs. And Copa Yiba, actually, because I feel um, very, or I take personally really, or on board what other people are feeling around me I'm gonna, and I'm affected by that quite a lot. I need to sort of balance and calm me um, and also ground me uh, to not get carried away, all right? So Copaiba really helps me. So this is a very beneficial oil to soothe anxious feelings, okay? It's very balancing to the system because it has got a very high antioxidant concentration. Um, it is good for overall cellular health, obviously, as well, because of the, the high antioxidants. It's also really good to support proper inflammatory um, reaction in the body, okay? We need that proper anti-inflammatory or inflammatory action to heal, okay? Because that's how, that's how our bodies heal. So if we can have an essential oil that can support that mechanism from becoming a um, chronic inflammatory condition because remember that leads to disease so if we can have an oil that's going to be supportive to that um, you know it's a really good place to be in so copa heba um, is 
comes from the Cofiera plant, okay, and that's a tree really. Um, Copafiera is, there's about four or five different species. My favorite essential oil company's oil um, is actually made from four different um, species in that plant group or tree group, shall we call it. Very high in sesquiterpene alcohols, um, uh, sorry, terpenes, okay, and more than 50%. All right, so Rihanna saying, sorry you're late. No stress, Rihanna. Remember, I load these onto my YouTube channel afterwards, so you can always go and review um, the video or the class. Um, and if you subscribe to the channel, obviously, then you're going to get alerted when I load new content on there as well. So that's always a good idea. Okay, so basically, because it's so high in these sesquiterpenes, um, it is very grounding and balancing and is very good at supporting anxious feelings and supporting and balancing um, systems or um, situations in your body that have gone off kilter or have gone off balance. So this is a really good oil for skincare as well, um, supporting where your skin is out of balance. In other words, perhaps your skin barrier has been affected by something, maybe because we are washing our hands too often at the moment and you're now damaging that barrier. Copa, um, Copahiba is very good at balancing that kind of condition, so very good topical oil, very good for skincare, and besides that, you are going to get that aromatic benefit as well, because as you're putting it on your skin, obviously the aromatic compounds are going to be um, evaporating off your skin, okay? Very good for anxious feelings. Um, so also a very good oil to put in your diffuser. I know it's not got a very strong smell, but it's a very distinct smell when you actually do put it in a cold air diffuser and it's just really gonna calm you right down. If you are living in an area where you've got a very big room and you're scared that you're gonna lose some of these aromatic molecules, a very good way to get them in is literally just to open the bottle and take a deep whiff, okay? Remember that's now gonna go through your um, olfactory uh, receptors in your nasal cavity and then straight from there those chemical compounds or messages are going to go straight to the limbic brain which is quite a few areas in the brain and then through the limbic system your brain is going to access past memories um, where it's going to associate and then it's going to be uh, supporting and secreting specific neurotransmitters that are either going to then be able to calm you and soothe those anxious feelings or for some of these tree oils are we, or wood oils that we're going to speak about, see how they energize you. Okay, so that was a little bit about Copaiba. Now we're going to go to some of the other oils before we get to Frank, which is one of my other favorites. Um, so Arbor Vitae, um, I do have people that say that Arbor Vitae smells a little bit like petrol, okay? But it's because of the very strong terpenes in that oil. It's a very powerful cleansing and purifying agent, by the way. Um, and a lot of people actually create their own fragrances from combining Arbor Vitae with cedarwood um, as well as frankincense because it's a very spicy and earthy, um, very nice sort of fragrance, especially for men. Um, and you can also apply Arbor Vitae very effectively to the skin uh, to support um, the appearance of blemishes because remember what I said, these wood oils um, are really high in antioxidant content and are really good for skin health. All right, cedarwood, that's one of the ones. Someone mentioned they like cedarwood. Okay, cedarwood is one of the, the very nice ones that I put in my diffuser sometimes. I also make quite a few sleepy time rollers. So they literally are a blend that I make with various of the wood oils. Um, actually, the reason why I put them in there is more than just the, the calming and the soothing benefit that they give you, but wood oils, hi Henny, also joined in. Fantastic, and Renelle, thank you guys for joining in. You can go and catch the beginning by replaying either this in my time uh, or my timeline in my feed on my Botanical Me page or just going to rewatch on YouTube once I've loaded it, okay? So don't, don't be scared that you missed the beginning. So um, basically why I add the wood oils to my sleepy time blends that I make to assist and support me to fall asleep quicker and to support better quality sleep is because these are generally regarded as base oils and base oils are also used as fixatives. So whatever else you put in there, they also make the, the aromatic compounds stick there for longer. Okay, so it lets the fragrance last a little bit longer. So usually ratios, if you're going to be making blends base one versus middle notes two and top tones three, um, so you don't actually need a lot of these base oils at all, but it's again, you're gonna either put them into a roller um, to roll on topically with some carrier oil, or you can put them in your diffuser, okay? So um, basically the cedar wood is a really good one at night, either in a diffuser or in a roller um, that you can roll onto the bottom of your feet or onto your chest area. 
And actually, there's quite a lot of um, information or testimonials out there, out there that when children wake up in the middle of the night and they feel really frightened, that literally applying one drop of cedar wood diluted, obviously depending on the age of the child, to the bottom of their feet calms them right down and quickly so that they can fall back to sleep quite easily again. So definitely try cedar wood for something like that. You can also pop it in a diffuser next to them. Cyprus. Um, Cyprus is generally known as the oil that increases circulation, so it's really good for the circulatory system. Um, but it's also very good to invigorate the senses. So here you can see it's going to have the calming and the balancing properties because it is a wood or a tree oil, but it's also able to invigorate you um, when you need that extra little bit of oomph. Douglas fir. Someone mentioned Douglas fir in here, not one of my favorites. Definitely, if it's one of yours, awesome. <laughs> Um, promotes positive mood and a sense of focus when you either apply it to your skin or you diffuse it, okay? So there's some very good attributes to Douglas fir there. Um, it's also a really good oil to combine with something like wintergreen, for instance, for a relaxing massage experience. Eucalyptus. So eucalyptus tree obviously has got a very distinct scent, um, very good for respiratory support, and you can, what I very regularly do just to invigorate me it's again an invigorating oil is just put one or two drops onto my shower floor and then i turn on the hot water and because of the hot water the aromatic components of this eucalyptus thing goes into the air and it's this beautiful energizing and invigorating effect um, while soothing and calming you because it's a tree oil um, and also offering your respiratory um, system some support okay so when you are feeling slightly congested because of environmental threats or perhaps you're someone that is very hay feverish because of what's going on in, in the air around you um, so that's a very good world to try there um, then we get to tea tree. I actually did a live or a video about this two weeks ago tea tree being one of my most favorite versatile oils in my medicine cupboard um, and melaleuca or tea tree can be added to a lot of um, beauty products. So your self-care products, your shampoos, your conditioners, um, in your toner that you spritz on your face, um, in your face cream because it's really good for skincare. It's got really good antifungal properties in there over and above giving you the calming and the soothing effect. And if you remember back from my tea tree um, lesson that I did or class that I did, it's also the oil that... Um, allows um, barriers to be broken in other words if there are negative connections with energies around you or with people around you tea tree is a really good oil to put on your pulse points um, for those negative energies to dissipate or um, to not affect you and to pull you into that tide or take you into the deep end in the sea okay so that's why it's very balancing and centering and grounding right myrrh um Biblical times, guys, this oil has been around for a very long time. These resins are, or they used to use the resins obviously then and burnt that because they are so very grounding and very calming. Myrrh, incidentally, is also an excellent oil for skincare um, and for oral health. So um, basically the, the resin, uh, they used to, in history, eat quite a lot of the resin um, for dental, um, what do you call it, for, for dental support. Um, but besides that, it's also a very meditative oil, again, because it is a resin and a very powerful resin from a wood or a tree oil, it's got those very balancing and calming effect and soothing effect um, to your body. Petit grain, uh, which actually comes from uh, the orange tree as well, but it's the twig part. So petit grain, um, slight floral back note to it, but a lot of people who don't necessarily enjoy the fragrance of lavender, which is very calming and soothing, do find a lot of benefit from using petit grain instead, okay? It's got a very different smell, but it has the same calming um, and grounding and soothing effect as lavender would. Sandalwood, obviously. Oh, guys, I love sandalwood. I used to walk around for years, and especially people um, from the eastern countries, they have this beautiful fragrance around them, and whenever they move, it's just this waft. And I, I remember, especially when I went to Thailand, there was a lot of these people when we were walking in the streets, and then I would catch this beautiful phrase. I'm like, what is that? But I was always just too scared to go and ask them, listen, what is that that you're wearing? And then one day when I had finally received my really good quality therapeutic grade essential oil of sandalwood and I opened that bottle, I'm like, oh my word, for years I had wondered what that beautiful fragrance was because I think a lot of the stuff that I used to buy in the South African market were not pure enough or they might have had synthetic components in there. So it had a different smell. 
it didn't necessarily remind me exactly of what I was smelling while I was walking in, in, in all these different areas. And sandalwood, again, it is a very beautiful oil, um, beautiful fragrance, very grounding, um, very good fixative. So really good for um, keeping scents down with it. And sandalwood, guys, one drop goes a really long way. It's one of those oils that just lasts and lasts and lasts um, because it is such a very strong fixative and base oil. All right, very calming, very balancing. Okay, then we also have white fur. Um, this is a holiday kind of scent, so if you're thinking, walking through a pine forest, um, and this is now related to summer and winter, uh, because in summer, people tend to go to the coast in South Africa, where there's a lot of pine forests, okay? So we're gonna get that whiff of beautiful aromatic molecules there. But also in the colder countries where it snows, obviously with all those um, smells that they have during the winter time over there. So white fur is actually quite distinctive of um, holiday times or, or festive period seasons, no matter where you are across the world. Again, a very grounding, very soothing, very comforting oil. Um, and it is a good one to put in your palms and breathe to evoke feelings of stability. Okay. So those are the other wood oils, and now we're gonna go back to my other favorite, which is frankincense. If you guys missed the um, salve recipe, balm recipe that I posted, um, I think it was on Sunday, please go and get it from there, um, because obviously frankincense has got a lot of additional benefits over and above just be very gra um, being grounding and, and calming and soothing. Um, it's got a, a lot of um, cell support benefits to it. In other words, it's really good for skin care as well, again, from the antioxidants and all the other properties that it has. Very good in supporting cell regeneration, all right? But besides that, because it is so calming and soothing to the senses and very good at grounding you, putting it in a soothing balm is not just going to address the area where you want to support it topically, but you're going to get the aromatic benefit as well and therefore affect um, your, your senses emotionally too. Okay, so frankincense, which is my other favorite, just get to my notes here um, basically very good one um, in a diffuser okay the last couple of days as I said I have been using copaiba and frankincense quite a lot I actually also posted a very nice diffuser recipe the last couple of days so please go get that from my page too and it's so simple it's literally a couple of drops of frankincense and the exact drops is actually on the recipe on my botanical me page so just go and download it from there you can download the image to your phone and then you always have it at hand um, but literally frankincense and copaiba together and then I add some on guard too which is a protective environmental blend that my favorite essential oil company has um, so that's going to be supporting my immune system but it also brings a little bit of spiciness and citrus oils into that fragrance which are really um, uplifting to the senses so at the same time um, lessening anxious feelings grounding and supporting me but also uplifting me especially throughout the day and that really helps to balance out energies um, balance out systems in the body um, so all of those are oils really coming from trees. If you think wood oils, tree oils, think of a tree and always think grounding, very earthed, very stable, a lot, a lot, like a tornado or something has to happen for that tree um, to actually fall over um, because it's just really a, a safe environment. A tree is just one of those, I'm always just standing there. So if you wanna feel like a tree and be that balanced, reach for your wood oils, okay? Now we get to the part where we add additional techniques and skills to your wellness routine on a daily basis because you've got to support the essential oils as well as you've got to be eating correctly, all those kind of things to support your health. So things to think about, um, a couple of weeks ago I also did a video where we talked about anxious feelings and tension and simply breathing. Um, pranayama, energy flow, simply by breathing and doing something we call boxed breathing, you are going to reactivate your parasympathetic nervous system and that's going to calm you and ground you and earth you if you want to feel that way, just to stay focused and not get pulled away by the tide or get pulled into the deep end by everything else that is going around you. And if I can just remind you what that is, simply breathing in for four counts, do it with me, one, And then you can hold for four. And exhale for four. And hold for four. And I like the count of four. If I do that four times, really calm, really centered, very grounded, okay? What will also help if you can be outside doing that with your feet 
firmly planted in the grass, okay? Feeling the earth between your toes and in between your feet is really, really good for grounding you or to try and get you to a space where you are feeling or you have feelings that are um, not as anxious as you are normally used to, okay? So there's another technique. Just literally going to put your feet in the ground. If you do not have ground and you're living in an area where you don't have a garden outside, pot plant um, with some lawn on it is a really good idea to just put your feet on. Okay, so there's another one for you. A lot of um, people obviously do yoga and meditation. I'm one of those, okay? Um, yoga really centers me, really calms me down and really grounds me, okay? Because there's physical exertion and I'm getting the lymph moving and the toxins out, but also it allows my brain to just switch off for a bit and focus to be in the moment because there's so many things going on. As soon as we are focusing on our breathing, so that pranayama breathing or the box breathing, okay? And we are actually physically exerting ourselves to such a level that we can't be thinking, what am I gonna cook for dinner? What, what is that child doing? No, don't stick your finger on the stove. All of those things going on on the outside, um, you get very focused in the moment. And when you're in the moment, you will very soon realize that you also become very focused and calm and grounded. Okay, so um, meditation, obviously, uh, depending on which religion you belong to, this could be anything from sitting still and just feeling what's going on in your body. Can be a guided meditation. Um, it could also be that you simply just um, have a, sit and have quiet time reading your um, biblical text. So all of that quiet time I would regard as meditation specifically. And then if you can incorporate that with something that relaxing or soothing to the body, but also where you tone your muscles like Pilates or yoga, those are really good combinations too. Um, those are obviously going to be really beneficial. And I think what the internal conversations that go around um, is probably one of the, the more important ones as well because if you're constantly regurgitating thoughts and you're making yourself worried about silly things, one thing that I listened to this morning which I found really beneficial to me specifically that I can resonate with, which is going to be tough because I know this is an area that I myself personally really struggle with, um, is tagging things. Uh, everything is really black and white for me. It's always been like that. It's either right or wrong um, and I'm losing the inquisitiveness and the the investigative part of that beautiful gray area that's in between. So simply by trying to focus to not tag something as good or bad immediately when you hear something will allow you to focus on the situation or what's happening at that instance. Because think about it, when you put that good or bad tag on it, basically what happens is you've already got this preconceived idea, okay? You've already charged it with some kind of energy, whether it's negative or positive. So simply focusing on not adding a tag and perhaps letting it develop um, and being inquisitive about it will allow you to maybe not react as negatively um, when it's something we classify as a bad something. Um, and I'm definitely going to be trying that going forward because I know this is an area that I really, really struggle with. Okay. I really quickly make up an idea about whether I like something or I don't like something or whether something is good or something is bad. And I don't necessarily always allow myself to explore fully um, what, could it, what could it teach me. In other words, if it's something that does turn out to be negative, am I allowing myself to um, see it as a challenge where I can grow instead of just disregarding it or trying to hide it because I don't like it? Um, so it's definitely going to inspire you to grow and become more fulfilled too um, because you are basically expanding that bubble of yours, of your comfort zone because we only learn when we're very far out of our comfort zones, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, if you also are very keen on the same essential oil company that I am, I'm just going to quickly run through some blends that are going to offer you all in one box, the same things that I have just been speaking about. So um, past tense is a tension blend. There's quite a few oils in the tension blend to calm and soothe tensious feelings, tension feelings. This is something I spoke about last week as well. But just referring back now to the wood oils that are actually in this past tense blend. Um, and there's a lot of frankincense in there. And that is also the fixative and it's also what is grounding and balancing you in that specific blend. If we then switch to the Intune blend, which is the focus blend, this is a blend um, that balances and enhances a sustained level of focus. Um, it's got a very nice musky, um, spicy and earthy blend. And if you've ever been around me, whenever you've said to me, you smell gorgeous, now the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> That's what it is, okay? So Intune is my perfume. I love wearing that essential oil blend every single day. 
And because there are so many fixatives and wood oils in there, the fragrance lasts for a really, really long time, okay? So um, the, the, there's obviously other oils in there as well, but the wood oils in the Intune blend include frankincense and Hawaiian sandalwood. All right, and then there's another blend that I also very or use very often. It is called doTERRA's Anchor Blend or the Steadying Blend, and this is an oil obviously I used a lot during yoga sessions specifically because when you're doing quite a lot of challenging asanas or balancing asanas, just having that additional support to focus and calm your mind is really beneficial. Um, and in there, the wood oil concentration is actually quite high um, in that Anchor Blend, and it contains cedarwood, there's the ones that were loving the cedarwood. Oh, Charmaine's also one of those. Cedarwood, frankincense, and sandalwood. Okay, so that's a, it's a really good blend to go um, and go and get if you don't have it yet, specifically to help ground and calm you. All right. So thank you for, to join, uh, for joining today's class. Um, I hope there was some information there that you can take home. If there are any additional questions on something that you would have liked to ask and I didn't see your comment during the live, please just go and post them in the comments for me because then I'll get back and answer you. Um, I'll also be uploading this uh, video to my YouTube channel. So if you've not yet subscribed, please go and subscribe because then obviously you do get alerted if there's new content. Okay, and also if you want to make suggestions on future videos or classes that you would like to see, I love those comments too. So please don't be scared to ask. Um, and if you do find this video useful and you have a loved one or a friend um, that you would like to share this with, my uh, Botanic Me page is not a closed group, so you're very welcome to actually just share the post itself directly to someone's either messenger or um, basically their page um, if you feel that they can benefit from it too. So please, please don't be scared to do that either. If you would like to receive the YouTube link itself for the specific video, also just pop me a comment um, below this video and I will get that sent to you as soon as possible. So thank you. Um, I hope that was useful to you. Wood oils are probably part of my favorites. I do use frankincense and copaiba um, a lot lately because of all the various energies and I really don't like that. I don't like to be thrown off kilter. <laughs> I like to be organized, balanced and grounded. Um, so if you're someone like that, obviously, I hope you um, start using frankincense and copaiba. They really are brilliant. But obviously all the other ones that I mentioned in there might be more, more beneficial to you. We are all biochemically different. We are all attracted to different oils. So please give them a try and let me know how it goes. See you all next week's Thursday, 12 noon, same time. Um, my favorite time to present a new class and new information to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.